Leading from coast to coast, the Federal Express thunders through the night. Adventures, thrills, romance. Ride the rails with Ned Jordan, secret agent. Under guise of settling labor and accident claims for the Consolidated American Railroad, Ned Jordan secretly investigates the activities of foreign agents and other federal enemies. Missions known only to J.B. Medwick, president of the railroad. Government authorities act on the information gathered by Jordan, who steps quietly out of the picture. The Federal Express slowed down for a station, and an attractive young woman prepared to leave the train. She opened the door of her compartment. Pardon me, just a moment, Miss Waterbury. I don't know you. The name is Proctor, Federal Department. What? There's a matter that we'd like to speak to you about. We'll stay right on the train until the next stop. Is this an arrest? Well, that's entirely up to you. If you'll come quietly and willingly, it won't be considered as an arrest yet. You have no warrant. But I have, you see. Now, will you go back into your stateroom quietly? Here's the address Waterbury carries, and here's the letter she was sent. It tells her to show the letter to the man who orders lentil soup. Lentil soup. Very well, Inspector Parker. I'll, I'll do my best. And, well, be careful, Judy. If Jordan or your father knew that you were in on this, he has my scalp. Oh, be careful. And when I do tell Ned, I'll lead him to believe it was nothing but coincidence that took me to that funny little restaurant. Do you mind if I sit here and sit at the only available table? What difference would it make if I mind it? It is unusual to find one of your type in, in a place like this. Is it? Unless, of course, you have some specific reason for coming here. I've heard that they have exceptionally good soup. Soup? Yes. Your order? I will have the lentil soup. Very well. Do you know many people here? I believe I have friends around here. Good, and so have I. That should perhaps make us friends, eh? I'm sorry, You but... perhaps are a friend of Margot, the cashier and waitress. And if I am? You might have a letter to her, or perhaps from her. I do happen to have a letter, but I couldn't show it to anyone unless I were certain that they, too, are a friend. Good. <laughs> so you are cautious. That is the best way. In this business, one cannot take chances. Hardly. But you will uh, recognize perhaps a sign, eh? Like uh, this? And you, in turn, would recognize a letter like this? Oh. I'm advised that everything I need to know will be told me here. You have heard of Karnak? Karnak? Isn't that an assumed name? So you also know that. That is good. Tomorrow is to be the day. The day? The foreign representative who uses the name of Karnak arrives tomorrow on the Federal Express. Those of us who live in the city have been instructed. I don't live in the city. I know. So now I tell you that tonight is the meeting. Where? You will be here at 8. Is the meeting to be here? You will at that time be advised where the meeting is held. The priestess of true light is eager that all should be on hand. Very well. Tomorrow is one of the biggest days in our true light cult. With the arrival of Karnak. Tell me this. How did you know that he was traveling under that name? We know much. Each day we gain new strength. So it would seem. You would be surprised at some of the things we have already learned and done. In two assassinations we have been successful. Tomorrow, when Karnak arrives to meet his end, it will be a great stroke for us. One that may have unlimited possibilities. Just what will Karnak, the man who is called Karnak, what will his death accomplish? You know the conditions in your country now? Yes, of course. It takes but little to start new trouble. Yes, but Karnak... His death may oh. arouse sympathies for our people. They will resent his death in America. Perhaps indemnities will be demanded. Apologies which the United States cannot and will not give. Perhaps the war will come, and then we shall have powerful nations in sympathy with us. I see. First the death, and then the propaganda that will follow. How many do you expect to attend the meeting tonight? At the very least, there will be 50 of us. All members of the true light. The true light. Is it not glorious? We shall someday rule the world. <laughs> Take me to the Consolidated American Railroad building and hurry. So after this guy started talking to you, you realized you might be on the track or something and kidded them along, huh? That's right, Ned. There will be 50 people at this meeting. But if this organization is so terribly secret, 
Why'd this bird start telling you so much? I told you, he was expecting someone else and mistook me for her. So when the woman he's waiting for arrives, he'll know he made a mistake. You shouldn't go to places like that. All right, I shouldn't, but I did. How did I know it was a hangout for the true light cult? Well, we won't worry too much about the true light. Let the crackpots can't overthrow America, you know. The police wouldn't like it. All right, treat it lightly then. I'll report the thing to the police and let them send a couple of men to attend the meeting. You better wait and hear what else I have to say. Well? And then, if you think my contact with that outfit can't be used, I'll retire to a dark corner and stand with my face to the wall. Yeah? <laughs> Go ahead, Judy. I didn't tell you who they're planning to murder. No. The guy's traveling under the name of Carnac. What? You knocked over your chair. Carnac? You shouldn't do that, Ned. It's hard on the office furniture. How do they know about Carnac? Federal Express has kept his travel one of the deep, dark secrets. Mm-hmm. And he's using an assumed name and traveling under the watchful eye of Merkel of the Federal Department. But the true lighters are planning his assassination. What does that make me? A valued ally or a fool dame that stuck her chin out too far? Well, but, Judy, the way he's being guarded, it'd be suicide for anyone to try and reach him. Sure, so what? You think fanatics like these people care about their own lives? Not a bit. They're glad of the chance to serve what they think is their patriotic cause by dying for a purpose. You know who Connack is? Sure, he's coming from Europe to discuss important deals and war supplies. And he has blue and royal blood in his veins. Exactly. It's worth the future of the railroad to move him safely and secretly. What else do you know? Well, holding the hands like this is a sign of recognition these true light people use. And Margot, cashier at this restaurant, is one of them. She gave the man I talked to the name of Callio. Callio. I'll see if he's known to the federal men. And the woman in charge of the local true light members is called a high priestess. Mm. One of those fanatic outfits. What a dangerous one. Especially to the Federal Express if they carry out their murder plan. Judy, you sit tight and say nothing. I've got to get a hold of Proctor and Merkel on the phone. Merkel's aboard the Federal Express with Carnac. I know. What can we do, though? You can't go to that meeting tonight. And on the other hand, we've got to learn the plan of these cultists if we're to protect Carnac. Jordan, may I come in? Oh, sure, Proctor. Just the guy I'm thinking about. Yeah? Judith ran into something big. Yeah, I know. You know. We made an arrest, Jordan. A woman named Waterbury. Real name, Kostiansky. And? She was on her way to a meeting of the True Light Cult. Well, we detained her. And Judy went in her place. Double crosser. What? I'm sorry, fella, but we were really desperate. We had to have a girl that resembled Waterbury, and I asked Judy to help us out. So that's it. All right, it was even in the interest of the railroad. Karnak is coming here on the Federal Express tomorrow, isn't he? Yes. One of the main purposes of his visit is to discuss matters with Medwick. If he's murdered in Medwick's home or office, it'll be a fine state of international affairs. All right, Carter. You know about the cult, and you sent Judy to sound out the people in the restaurant. But she is not going to the meeting tonight. No, I agree with you. She isn't. Let me go. I can learn a lot more there. They're going to discuss the plans for this this assassination. Not a chance. These cultists are crackpots, and they have some mighty fantastic notions. But, Jordan, they're dangerous. Well? And they're clever. If they weren't pretty shrewd, they'd never have kept their work quiet as long as they have. What do you want to mean, then? What's your idea? For the present, we'll have to abandon any hope of making arrests there and confine ourselves to guarding a man named Karnak. Okay. Now, it's up to you to pull the necessary strings and have the schedule changed around a bit. In short, shunt the Federal Express into a siding for half an hour before it gets to the city and bring some other train in in place of it. I think that can be arranged. I'll speak to Mr. Medwick about it right away. We'll have uh, one of our men disguised to resemble Karnak in the same relative stateroom on the train. And have him get killed? We'll give him all the protection we can. He, uh... He's willing to take a chance. And what if these murderers get him? Well, say the guerre. That's the sort of chance we take all the time. If they do attempt to get him, you'll be able to arrest him. Is that it? Yeah. And you'll get the one or two who make the murder attempt. You'll try to make them talk, and they won't talk. And the rest of these misguided fools will keep right on with their plans. Well? If you'll send me to that meeting tonight, you may get evidence against all of them. No, Miss Medwick. We can't let you do it. But why? I'm in with them now. I can be guarded by you men. No. If you keep insisting, I'll have your father take a hand. You'll see what you can do about those schedules? Yeah, right away. And let me know. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll wait to hear from you. Ned, you can't let Parker get away with it. You can't, do you hear me? Now, hold on. You sooner let him get killed than let me take the slightest risk. Parker? Yes, of course. He's the one who's going to impersonate Karnak. How do you know? Because he's the master of disguise. He's the one that always does that sort of thing. You can't let him make a target of himself tomorrow. Oh, but Judy... I can go to that meeting tonight, and you can tell Proctor I've gone. He wouldn't stand for it. But he needn't know until after I've gotten there. Just tell him I've gone, and then you couldn't stop me. You can get men to surround the building. They can follow if we leave there and be ready at the first sign of trouble. Your father wouldn't stand for it a minute, and you know it. Dad needn't know. Do you think I'm entirely helpless, Ned? I'm not quite the fool you make me out to be. I realize the type of people these cultists are. If anything happened to you, Judy... There's less chance of that than in what might happen to Proctor tomorrow... How do you suppose I'd feel if he were to be murdered? Knowing that if I'd gone to that meeting, I'd know the time and place and plan of the murder and been able to forestall it. 
I tell you, Ned Jordan, you've got to agree to let me go there. Judy, there's no use arguing. All they'll do is discuss the plans for killing Karnak. They'll designate the one who's to do it. And if we just know who it is, think how simple it would be to have him surrounded by federal men when the train pulls in. If they set up a plan to lure Karnak to some other place, I'll learn about that. They think I'm the Waterbury woman. Don't you see? They won't harm me. Wait a minute. It's Proctor's life, Ned. Can't you understand that? Yes, yes, I know. Now let me think. Let me try it. I wonder. The real Waterbury woman is in custody, isn't she? Yes, and there's no chance of her getting loose to tell Callio and Margo and the others that I'm an imposter. Judy, sit down. Well? I want you to tell everything you know about this cult. Don't leave out a thing. Tell all you know. And then perhaps... Perhaps what? Perhaps you can go to that meeting tonight. Early that evening, a guard approached the cell in which the Waterbury woman was held. Miss Waterbury. Well, now what? Some more questioning? Well, you might as well save your time and breath. I have nothing to say. You're free. What? Yeah, someone with influence came around with a writ. Well, isn't that something? It certainly is. What about my property? Stop at the desk on your way out. I'd sue you for false arrest. Maybe I will be crime finished. That's up to you. It's nothing to us. We're just local cops. It was the federal that made the complaint. All we did was hold you as he requested. We'll see if there's any justice around this country. I know my constitutional rights. Right in here, please. This way I get my handbag and the things from my pocket. Sign right here, please. I'll sign all right. And you haven't heard the last of this. Right were you, miss. I sort of let things stay as they are. You stir up a lot of trouble and you might find yourself in the middle of it. Is that a threat? Oh, no, no. Don't get that idea. There you are. Measure things. Count my money. Make sure that's all here. Fellow who delivered the writ is waiting at the curb. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, it's good after that. Waterbury. Uh, yes? Over here. Who are you? Your name is Bushing, Miss Waterbury. I doubt if it would mean much to you. I never heard the name before. When you were apprehended on a train, it became known at once. The only reason you were held was to make it possible for another woman to replace you in calling on Carlio and Margo. Who are they? Agents of the priestess. Oh. And you? The scout who saw what happened to you contacted the home office, which in turn communicated with me to effect your immediate release. Please get in. We are already late. Late? For what? For the meeting, you fool. At eight, it is to be started. And there is an imposter there. A spy for the federal government. Then drive. Eight o'clock, Ned. All right, Judy. Go to that restaurant, then. And be careful. I will be. Please don't worry. I wish I didn't have to. Everything will work out all right. Well, Carrillo, it is eight o'clock. And we locked the door. Uh, it is water, man. Let her in. I was afraid she wasn't coming. Come, come. You're almost late. Just eight, isn't it? The priest that insists that we be prompt. Alanto, you come stand guard at the door. I was to be told where the meeting is. Is it here? It is here. Here? The basement. You follow me. Very well. Coming, Margot. Coming. Down here? No, it's right. Is there another way to get in or out of this place? No. Well, aren't you afraid of being trapped here? We take precautions. But what would you do if you were found out? Why? Well, the Eastern office will be interested in knowing when I bring back my report. We will not be found out. The doors are well guarded. It's a place hall that might conceivably be used as evidence against us. Nothing is written. I see. Here now, the next door. You see? No window so light can shine out. And sound proof so nothing can be heard when we celebrate a great victory. Or punish an offender. The meeting will open now. Your robe is waiting, Margot. Yes. You are the princess. Quiet now. Quiet! Comrades, we convene tonight to plan for that event which tomorrow night shall be celebrated. You have been brought here to be informed of the plans when Karnak arrives. Cooperation on the part of all of you will be required. One among you will be appointed or otherwise chosen to do the actual deed. The other shall surround that one and forestall to the fullest extent the efforts of any who try to hold him after the shot has been fired. As to the fine points of the plan, we first shall select the one who is to do the killing. You all know the reward for doing such an act. 
the highest of honors to your name if you are captured and punished by law. If you escape, $5,000 in cash and a three-month leave of absence in which to enjoy the wealth. Tonight, I do not ask for volunteers. <laughs> Quietly. I am going to ask you to draw a bean from the hat. And the one who draws the black bean will be the one appointed for the task. Carlyle, please stand forward. Yes. Take the hat from the bean. The rest of you may converse softly while the drawing is being done. Carlyle, I want you to see to it that the new girl, Waterbury, is the one who gets the black bean. But why her? She is unproved. But her record in the east. And while we are concerned, she is unproved. Let her get the appointment with murder. Very well. Let you come on. Your turn to draw. Very well. Oh, white. Your turn. May I could use the money in the vacation. Ah, a white bean. When one draws the black bean, please declare yourself. And there will be no need to continue. There is but one black bean. White. Your turn. You want me to draw? Yes. The black. Black. It is over. <laughs> the black has been drawn. By whom? Waterbury. My congratulations. Please stand beside me. Very well. Our comrade who has just been transferred to this branch is honored with the great task of tomorrow. In her hands rests our hope of victory. <laughs> comrade, you will remain here in these rooms until the time of the appointment tomorrow. You will have no communication with the outside until you leave with your guard to go to the station. I need not advise you of penalties, need I? What penalties? There will be four men with you, each of whom will be armed with knives and guns. The guns are to defend you after you fire the death shot. And the knives, you know what they are for? What? They will be used on you if that shot is fired carelessly or not fired at all. Four friends will be close to you. And in the crowd, the knife, uh... <laughs> no, there is no misunderstanding, is there? No, there is none. And one thing further. Yes? It is possible you may find this task distasteful to you. Well? If so, it would verify a vague suspicion that has for some time been in my mind. What suspicion? You have had surprisingly little to say about the Eastern office. Or you, or are you not our comrade Waterbury? Whatever gave you the impression, I was not. I do not know. But if you are not, you can well imagine what is ahead for you. Of course I can. And you think that which is ahead would be quite justified, do you not? Of course. Very well. Now we shall proceed with the meeting. The next is... Stand by the door. There are other arrivals coming. I the next newcomer. Who are they? That woman. There she is. Please, that woman. Who are you? I'm Walter Berry. That woman's an imposter. No, no, wait. There's a mistake. Don't believe her. All right, don't believe me. But listen to what Comrade Bushing has to say. Let him tell what happened to me. How I was met on the train, my credentials taken away, and how I was taken to a detention cell. Is all this true? No, no, wait. Let me explain. Close that door and guard it well. No one is to leave. Let go of me. You're hurting my arms. We should break those arms if what has been said is true. Something more than that. This is the real Comrade. You have my word for it. She can give only passwords. She can recite every detail of what has gone before. That woman is marked for death. No, no, I... Please, please don't kill me. It is a splendid time to try the new silent gun. The air gun. The gun which will be used tomorrow for Connacht. Wait, wait. Connacht, Margot. I will take charge for the next two moments. That woman, imposter that she is, shall meet her punishment before you are. No. There. I would say the gun has proved successful. But you, who are you? He's a representative from the home office who affected my release from prison. In time to check that federal spy. That, that girl? A federal agent? And smart enough, Carly, you're a fool all of you. But now, if it is not she came here, what about this murder? How do we account for it? We must dispose you of it. You needn't worry about that, Carly. I'll attend to the disposition. I have the necessary contact. You have the necessary... Enough of them to get me out of prison. One moment. You say you are the real Waterbury. Yes. Then tell me. Why is it all right to bring knowledge and enlightenment to all the world and make a brotherly understanding that will make no man his brother's master? You know... One more. I say see. I say light. Together we are seeking light, the true light. I am satisfied. How else you could fool you are. You were taken in by that spy. But, but Margot, she had the letter. Stolen from me. All right, Margot. Now I take the stand. But you... What? I take the stand to introduce the new air gun, which has but recently been put at our disposal. I also bring good news. Let Bushing take the stand. He showed us the spy. All right. Thank you. Comrades, a high honor awaits one of you assembled here tonight. The one who is finally designated for the uh, appointment with Karnak tomorrow is to be given greater than ever rewards. What are they? That comrade is to return to the East with me to take over one of the highest offices in our international Light Brotherhood. This 
in addition to the cash bonus. Wait, wait, wait. Before we... You stand back there. I was only going to make sure this fire was there. Now to see. Stand back and listen when I'm speaking. Uh, I'm sorry. As I was about to say, before we designate who shall be honored, we must seek light and knowledge. And that is why I am here. I select the one for the high office in the East. Then let that man or woman prove his or her worth by killing Karnak. How do you plan to make this selection? By asking each applicant what he or she has done for us in the past. I helped in the assassination of the Wait, wait, wait! I cannot hear all of you at once. Let the priestess declare an intermission while each of you writes out his claims. Then let me consider these in turn. Is that agreeable? Yes. Put our action to writing? Is there anyone here whom you do not trust? How else am I to decide who is to be taken east? Very well. Declare the intermission. You have heard what our leader says. Act on his command. <laughs> Knowing that high honor awaited the member of the cult who was chosen by Bushing, the comrades itemized every claim that they could think of on a sheet of paper. And there was another incentive. Why, with that new air gun, it will be almost certain that the important one will escape unharmed. I must ask you to finish as quickly as possible. While Judith Medwick still lay on the floor, Bushing kept a sharp eye on his watch. And as the hands approached 9.30, he called for the papers. Bring them to me. Have you all signed your names? Yes, yes. I will need some time to look these over. And when we have made the selection, we will hand the papers to your priestess, Margot, to be burnt. So there will be no evidence against you. That is impossible. While I am studying these papers, I am going to present another new development that is now at our disposal. And that you have the chance to examine it. Here. These two small pear-shaped containers. Be careful of them. They break easily. What are they? He showed them to me on the way here. They're the newest of gas shells. Gas contained in these is exceptionally virulent. So please handle them with the utmost caution while I check your applications for promotion. Here, Margot. You may look first. Step. Look out! Careful! Look out. Not I! Oh, you clumsy fool! My eyes! My eyes! Get, get out! Get out of here and hurry! A deep breath of that means death! I think it's quick! Run! Open the door! Let me out of here! Let me out! Thick smoke filling the basement room without windows, the members of the cult raced up the stairs and through the restaurant, disregarding the all important papers they'd left behind. Out of my way! I can't come up the stairs! Hurry! Let me out of here! What do I hear? Bushing acted quickly. He snatched goggles and nose plugs from a pocket and clamped them over the face of Judy, who was still on the floor. Then he produced another outfit and protected himself against the gas. Talio turned. Yo, you black man! That girl is not dead! Why do you protect her? There's another bomb for you! Talio! The voice that rang out was not the one that Bushing had been using. It was the voice of Proctor of the Federal Department. Screams and shouts of pain and fear filled the restaurant. The front door burst open and men lined the path from the door across the sidewalk to the police wagons that were waiting at the curb. There they come, boys. Heard of it. Hey, hey, what is this? Get with you and make it fast. All right. You got nothing against me. Constitutional right. By this time, we've got confessions of everything you've done. Signed by each of you. Get in those wagons. This is an arrest. Uncle Sam wants you. Some more coffee, Inspector Proctor? Coffee? I never refuse that, Miss Medwick. And this is a pretty modest celebration in view of everything. Proctor doesn't have to put his life on the chopping block tomorrow. Connack will not be attacked, and Uncle Sam has made a nice house cleaning of at least one nest of rats. Oh, Jordan, that idea of yours was a honey. Nonsense. The idea was nothing. It took working out. And you and Judy certainly did that. Yeah, but how did you know it could work out that way? Well, you first won the confidence of the Waterbury girl by getting her out of jail. Then by showing her the air gun and the gas bombs. Sure, and then she carried me through the rest of the way. The make-believe shooting of Judy with a capsule of red ink to leave a smear got you into the confidence of that gang. And the offer of a big promotion took you right into their greedy hearts. After that, it was a natural. Yeah, but you, Jordan, had it all reasoned out that the bunch would react just as they did. They couldn't react any other way, Proctor. It was fundamental psychology. <laughs> okay, Jordan. And say, Ju uh, Miss Medwick, you'd better skip that coffee. You don't want it? Uh, I'd better clear out. But why? Well, you and Jordan here, the two of you. Moonlight and roses and a third party. <laughs> I'm getting out. And that's... Just fundamental psychology. <laughs> and anyway, I want to watch the midnight train taking that pack of crackpots out of the city. That's worth watching. Oh, 
Just heard the adventure of the True Light Co. These exciting dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit and are sent to you each Tuesday night at this same time. They are copyrighted features of Ned Jordan, Secret Agent Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used in this drama are purely fictitious. Bob Hyde speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.